My name is Emily, and I'm 29 years old. I've been married to my husband for two years, and I've recently become a full-time homemaker after experiencing childbirth for the first time. Despite the struggles I face due to postpartum, the cuteness of my angelic son makes all my fatigue vanish. I can't help but gush. He has pure, adorable eyes. I bet he'll grow up to be a handsome boy. I'm already head over heels as a proud mother. However, despite my happiness, I have a problem. It's the presence of my mother-in-law, who visits us almost daily. My in-laws live about a 30-minute walk away. My mother-in-law started coming over to support me postpartum as a substitute for my busy husband and my parents who live far away. Although her help would normally be appreciated, she does little to actually assist me. Instead, she just lounges on the sofa, watching her Korean soap opera DVDs that she brings along. She's more of a burden than a help, expecting me to serve her tea and fetch her tissues. She was the one who offered a help, but what is she here for exactly? I have tried telling her, I'm fine, you can go home, but I ended up getting an earful from my husband later that night. Undoubtedly, my mother-in-law complained to him about being sent away. Even though I asked him to stop because our son was crying, my husband still snapped at me. He is a real mama's boy. I wish I could go back in time and punch my past self for not noticing this before we got married. He insists that I replicate his mother's recipes and even tries to make me dress more like her. No matter what I say, my husband worships his mother as if she's a goddess. However, I continued to discuss the matter with my husband. We don't need to rely on your mom. It would help so much if you could just help me out a little. What? I work all day, and I'm exhausted. Besides, I bet the baby is happier when you take care of him. Even when I'm talking to him, his eyes are always glued to the TV or his phone, showing no sign of being engaged in the conversation. Does he not care about our son? I'm just as exhausted as he is. With my eyes bloodshot from lack of sleep, fatigue, and stress, I glare at him. Don't you dare complain to my dad. He's also busy and won't tolerate any unnecessary drama. For a moment, he turned his gaze to me, and my husband spoke as if to warn me. My father-in-law is nearing retirement, but still works a lot. I know he is busy. However, it would be a great comfort if he, who treats me like his daughter, could say something to my husband or mother-in-law. As I recall my conversations with my husband, my mother-in-law's inconsiderate voice snaps me back to reality. Emily, the baby is fussing. Hurry up and soothe him down. It's the fun part of the drama now. She calls, not taking her eyes off of the TV screen. I stop folding the laundry to attend to my son. As I pass the back of my engrossed mother-in-law, I stick my tongue out at her in my mind. Being worn out from children and sleep deprivation, her presence, doing nothing but hanging around, has become a major source of stress for me. However... It has nothing to do with my son. If my husband is not willing to help, then 
I am the only one left for my son. Well, I should get going. She finally says when the clock strikes five. She quickly gets up from the sofa, uses my dressing table as if it's her own, fixes her makeup perfectly, and goes out into the twilight city. Apparently, she is taking dance classes for her health and to maintain her beauty. From the time we met to discuss our wedding, she would brag, saying, I used to be a model, so it's a habit for me to stay presentable. Thanks to that, people always think I'm younger than I actually am. It's a pain. She is 58, but admittedly, she does look younger than her age. That being said, if she's going to classes this late, she should just go during the day, instead of wasting time at my house. Grandma doesn't do anything, does she? As I spoke to my son in my arms, he was soundly asleep, gently breathing. An hour later, the doorbell rang. It was my father-in-law. Having been thoroughly tired of my mother-in-law's behavior for days on end, I ignored my husband's advice and had been secretly discussing the matter with my father-in-law over the phone. My father-in-law wanted to see his grandson's face, so he had made time out of his busy schedule to come and visit us. Looking at my sleeping son, my father-in-law, whose expression was softer than my husband's, chuckled. He is so adorable. So, she left an evening today for her dance class without helping out the house again today? <sighs> my father-in-law sighed as he looked around the mess in my house. Guessing from his response, it seemed he just found out about his wife attending dance classes. Seeing the state of my house, he must have realized that his wife really hadn't been helping out at all. My father-in-law bowed his head and apologized to me. It's not your fault, I rushed to say, but he shook his head. My wife herself said she would support you, Emily. But this, I'll see to it that she doesn't come here from tomorrow. And I understand my son may not be much of a help. But if there's anything you need, let me know anytime. Thank you so much, I responded gratefully. It seemed that my father-in-law was also worried about my husband's lack of interest in housework and childcare. For the first time in a long time, I felt the touch of kindness, and it brought tears to my eyes. About three months have passed since my father-in-law started visiting us. Thanks to him, my mother-in-law had stopped coming to our house. My mood has been brighter ever since. I never knew I could feel this relieved just by her not coming. My son has even been able to hold up his hand now, and I've been able to spare a little more time for housework. Oh, it's a mess again. I sighed as I spotted the state of my half-open husband's room. Dirty shirts and socks were scattered all over the floor. I threw them in the laundry basket and decided to sweep the floor while I was at it. As I shoved the cleaning tool under the bed, I felt something was off. Hmm, did I hit something? As I maneuvered the cleaning tool, a clear file slid out with the bank book inside. Gosh, he's such a slob. I muttered. I picked up the bank book and set it on my husband's desk and suddenly my breath hitched. I realized it was not my husband's bank book, but the one we'd set up for our son. 
Why was our son's bank book in my husband's room when I always kept it somewhere else? Currently, the only money in the account was the generous amount gifted from my parents and my father-in-law for the birth of our son. It was a considerable amount saved for our son's future. A sense of dread crept over me as I tentatively opened the bank book. All the money in it was withdrawn. Out of impulse, I opened my husband's desk drawer and pulled out his bank book. Even though I knew I shouldn't, I couldn't stop myself. Just as I thought, I muttered. Opening my husband's bank book, I found that the entire bonus he'd just received was withdrawn. Moreover, the remaining balance was too low. My mind went blank. Even as I heard my son crying in distance, I was too stunned to rush to him as I usually would. A few hours later, when my husband came back from work, I confronted him. He was initially angry that I had entered his room and looked through his things, but eventually confessed. I was financially helping my mother. What? Why would you need to support your mother? And I can't believe you do something like this without telling me. You even dipped into our child's savings. This is not okay. My husband angrily thumped his desk as I confronted him. Look, I only help out because my mom said she was struggling, okay? She's probably got problems we know nothing about. Besides, it's my hard-earned money. If you have so many complaints, maybe we should just get a divorce. He grumbled. Our son, who had been gently snoring in his crib, woke up and started crying. My husband argued with me and disturbed our son's sleep. I hurried over to him and lifted him up in my arms. The money you earned? The money in the account was a generous gift from our parents for our son. You can't claim it. Both your dad and my parents gifted us thinking about our son's future. Don't you feel guilty at all? And I'd appreciate if you would stop mentioning divorce so thoughtlessly, I retorted, watching our son now cradled in my arms and calming down from his tears. My husband snorted with a look of annoyance. Then he presented a sheet of paper on the desk. It was a divorce paper. And his section was already filled out. I was shocked, and my eyes widened in surprise. I wouldn't mind getting a divorce any time, to be honest. But you wouldn't want to be struggling financially, burdened with a newborn baby. He said, seemingly thinking this would shut me up. My feelings started to recede at my husband's childish behavior. That's when I realized something. He had never once held our son. Seeing me silent, my husband laughed, almost as if he was certain of his upper hand. So from now on, please pay the living expenses from your own pocket, he added nonchalantly, tapping my shoulder before leaving the room. As the living room door closed, I sank to the floor. Exhausted. Tears naturally flowed down my cheeks. My son, nestled in my arms, stretched out his little hand to me and giggled innocently. I had made up my mind. The next day I submitted the paper he'd handed me to the city hall. Afterwards, I got on an Amtrak train. I left a note saying... I'll submit the divorce papers and will be claiming alimony and reimbursement for the money you used. Along with my wedding ring. I was concerned about taking our newborn baby outside, 
but he seemed intrigued by the new surroundings and was fortunately in a good mood. I braced myself to take extra care of his health. I was headed to my parents' house in Michigan. I only brought essentials for our son and had a few of my valuables, so I didn't have much luggage. My parents, having been informed the previous night, were ready to welcome us. After hearing my husband and his mother's actions, they were enraged. But they smiled kindly and suggested that I help them with their family business and raise my son here. My parents ran a fruit farm. It was a tough job, but I had helped out since I was a kid and had some experience and knowledge. I began to think that it might not be so bad. The next day, while I was enjoying a rare moment of relaxation, my phone rang. It was my mother-in-law. Reluctantly, I answered the call. Emily, what the hell is this about? The moment I put the phone to my ear, a shrill scream pierced through. Somewhat irked, I replied. Who are you? Huh? Taken aback by my nonchalant response, my mother-in-law stuttered. Feigning recollection, I exaggeratedly said, Oh, is it you, mother-in-law? I'd completely forgotten about you since I've already divorced your son. My somewhat light-hearted reply seemed to shake her. Emily, do you realize what you have done? Acting so selfishly. I assumed my husband had to run to her, not expecting me to really go through with the divorce. It made sense that she was panicked enough to call. Selfish? I think the problem lies with your son, who presented me with a signed divorce agreement as a threat. Though it worked out just fine for me, I responded calmly. She didn't seem to understand. I'll forgive you for this. Get to married to my son. He's so upset, he's crying right now. I wondered if he was still by her side. The image of my husband watching me talk on the phone with my mother-in-law, tears welling up in his eyes, sent a chill down my spine. At the same time, I was utterly speechless at his determination to somehow get his mother to intervene. Enough is enough. I don't need a mama's boy for a husband or a mother-in-law who spends her night in male strip clubs. Huh? <coughs> My mother-in-law choked on her words from the other end of the phone. How do you know that? It was clear she reacted to the mention of the gentleman's club. This happened last night. After my husband left the living room, I pulled out my phone. One call was to my parents to tell them I planned on divorce and coming home. The other was to my father-in-law to whom I owe gratitude and an apology to explain the situation. That's when my father-in-law revealed everything to me. The reason mother-in-law had been practically living at our house was to visit a male strip club that opened at 6 p.m. There were various reasons she stayed at her place during the day, the first being our house was closer to the club than hers. Plus, by spending her days at our house, she could avoid chores at her own place. She also used me and our son as excuses to get back late. All this worked in my mother-in-law's favor. Apparently, she had taken quite a fancy to one of the dancers at the club and had been spending a lot on him. It was hard to believe that my mother-in-law, who had always been a homemaker, had any money of her own. And she couldn't even drink alcohol because of her low intolerance. She had been withdrawing money from the bank account my father-in-law maintained, buying drinks for the dancers while sipping sodas herself. My father-in-law had been suspicious of my mother-in-law after I asked about her. 
Despite being forbidden from coming to our house, my mother-in-law continued to find reasons to go out for a while. Realizing something was off, he followed her and discovered she had been a regular at a strip club. He was deeply shocked to find out about her escapades and the misses of his bank account. To think she'd even take money from her son and grandson. If only I'd found out sooner. I am deeply sorry, Emily. And to my grandson as well. The gravity of my father-in-law's guilt and apologies over the phone, having learned about our situation, was overwhelming. You lied to my husband for money because she didn't have enough to lavish on those entertainers, didn't you? My mother-in-law remained silent at my accusation. I could hear her husband's voice over the phone saying, Mom, tell me that is all a lie. It seemed he had been listening after all. After a moment of silence, my mother-in-law erupted in anger. Don't use such vulgar words like lavish. I'm just showing Chris my affection. He loves it when I visit him. Chris must be her favorite dancer's name. I sighed at my mother-in-law's pathetic outburst. The thought of my son's money being spent on her entertainment boiled my blood again. Neither my father-in-law nor I will let this slide. You better be ready, ma'am. I ended the call and switched off my phone. A few days later, I received a call from my husband who made a sincere apology about the misuse of money and his mother's actions. Regarding the divorce papers, he admitted that it was only on his mother's insistence, saying, If she bothers you, just show her the divorce papers. She'll stop bothering you and he wasn't serious about it. He was deeply regretful about being fooled by his mother, who he trusted unconditionally and, eventually, driving us to divorce. He seemed to have finally woken up. I'm truly sorry. I've transferred $20,000 into your account as a token of my remorse, including the misused money and for the inconveniences caused. I hope this shows my sincerity. Let's start over and create a happy family. I need you, Emily, just as much as you need me. His words made my skin crawl. Reconciliation is not an option. I only need my son. From now on, I'll need child support. We can discuss this further with our lawyers. I knew that the $20,000 was the money my father-in-law had lent my husband. It was the money saved for his retirement, separate from the account my mother-in-law had been spending from. From now on, my husband would have to work hard to repay his father and provide child support for our son. He'd also be under his father's surveillance. My husband, who believed I would be forgiving him, was in tears and apologizing. But it was too late. I said goodbye and ended the call and promptly blocked his contact. Two months have passed since the discussion with my husband. Facilitated by our lawyers was completed. Right now, I'm assisting at my parents' orchard while also dedicating myself to child-rearing. After my divorce from my husband, I've continued to keep in touch with my father-in-law. Sometimes he comes over to see my son. Through conversations with my father-in-law, I learned that my mother-in-law had secretly accrued debt. My father-in-law, who had secretly been preparing for divorce, showed no mercy and kicked my mother-in-law out. Now it seems my ex-husband reluctantly took in his mother and they're living together. Both my ex-husband and his mother are forced to work to repay the debts 
and are living under extreme poverty. As I look into my son's innocent eyes, I'm determined to raise him so he doesn't end up like his father or my mother-in-law.